Hello, Defcon. Nice to meet you. Let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Sergey Puzankov. I work at uh, Positive Technologies Company as a telecom security expert. A uh, couple of words about my experience. I have been working uh, for uh, telecom industry for more than 18 years. During this period, I worked in uh, telecom equipment vendor as a support engineer. Uh, I worked uh, in uh, a huge multinational mobile operator as a quality engineer. And uh, now my current position is telecom security expert, where I perform uh, security research and uh, perform uh <coughs> penetration tests or security assessments of mobile networks. All our findings uh, we uh, contribute to non-commercial -com organizations such as uh, ITU and GSMA, and also uh, we share this information at uh, security conferences. And now I'm going to share uh, my uh, recent research with you. The subject of uh, this presentation is SS7. But what the SS7 is? SS7 is a control plane of uh, protocols. This is not one protocol, but a set of protocols that is uh, primarily intended uh, to set up and release telephony calls. When uh, mobile uh, telephony appeared, SS7 <coughs> uh, sta started uh, processing SMS messages, subscriber mobilities, and some other services. Uh, SS7 works uh, between uh, network elements only, not on the user side. Uh, the elementary portion of the SS7 signaling calls message. I will use this term throughout uh, the presentation. Just uh, remember, message is uh, similar to a packet in IP networks. Uh, nowadays, uh, SS7 telephony, uh, or no, s sorry, SS7 signaling is used in uh, fixed telephony, in uh, mobile networks uh, of 2G and 3G standards like JSMA and uh, UMTS, and uh, for interconnection with next generation networks like LTE and uh, 5G in the future. There is an opinion that uh, SS7 is an obsolete uh, technology and uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow all, all we will use only 4 and 5G mobile devices. But if we look at uh, the official statistics from JSMA, JSMA, uh, this is association of all mobile operators, uh, mobile operators of all standards, we could see. Uh, we are somewhere here now on at this point. And th the number of uh, 2G and 3G users is about 5 billion. So each of 5 billion subscribers uh, could be a target of the SS7 hacker. Once the hacker got access to the SS7, they are able to intercept all subscribers' di data like SMS and voice calls. They can uh, receive uh, confidential information, including information about subscriber location. They could perform DOS attacks on uh, single subscribers or the whole networks. Also, uh, these hackers are able to take uh, control over the digital identity, including emails, social networks, uh, application messages uh, like WhatsApp, Telegram, and so on. And also hackers in uh, signal networks are able to steal money, for example, from uh, balances of subscribers or using some fraudulent activity against the operator at all. 
why s s seven uh, is insecure uh, <coughs> to answer th this question uh, we need to look at history of s s seven uh, development when s s seven uh, has been developed it was the era of uh, trusted networks uh, because there were only a few uh, telephone operators who uh, were connected to the SS7. But later, in uh, early 2000s, some new specification was introduced. It calls SIGTRAN. Uh, this specification uh, allowed sending SS7 uh, traffic via IP networks. Uh, before this, SS7 was isolated network. By but uh, from this point, SS7 stopped being is isolated. In 80s, uh, mobile operators uh, got widespread. So there are a lot of uh, uh, subscribers, a lot of new players in this market, a lot of traffic. And nowadays, uh, trusted area is over because uh, there are a lot of l uh, more and more operators are connected to the SS7. Mobile operators are aware of uh, this problem and uh, they protect, it pr protect their networks. They use uh <coughs> a lot of uh, tools, security tools, such as SS7 firewalls, SMS home routing, signaling ideas, and also they can configure uh, equipment in uh, compli uh, with compliance uh, of security. And one more thing, uh, mobile operators orders external penetration testing of their signal networks in order to understand how their networks uh, look like from external hacker hackers point of view. So, I will speak about uh, mobile networks and I need to describe uh, some uh, terms, some identities and uh, node elements of uh, these networks. Uh, first identity is MSSDN. Uh, identity with uh, this uh, loan abbreviation is just a telephone number, all we use. The next uh, <coughs> term is GT or global title. This is address of a core node element and the global title has the s structure similar to MSSDN, similar to uh, telephone numbers. The third identity is IMSI. IMSI, International Mobile Subscriber Identity, this is identifier of a SIM card. And nodes, STP, signaling transfer point. Uh, this is a router of uh, signaling traffic, of signaling messages between uh, core network elements. HLR, Home Location Register. This is a database of all home subscribers of the operator. Uh, this database contains uh, information uh, of subscriber profiles, uh, which contain uh, subscriber identifiers, IMSI and MSSDNs, uh, list of allowed and prohibited services, and so on, some uh, technical information. The next element is MSC and VLR. This node uh, performs two functions. First of them is MSC, Mobile Switching Center. Uh, this uh, node is responsible for voice call routing. And VLR visited lo location register. This is uh, <coughs> one more database. This database uh, contains information about active subscribers who are under the coverage area of this node. VLR uh, receives copies of uh, subscriber profiles from HLR and, and reaches uh, them uh, with some uh, information of uh, radio access part. For example, cell identity. And uh, the last one 
<coughs> the, the last uh, node is SMIC or SMS center. This node is responsible for SMS processing. Since the subject is SS7, uh, I need to describe the structure of this protocol. I omit uh, some low layers of, uh, this, uh, s uh, of this protocol stack because uh, they are responsible for neighboring communication. The lowest uh, layer protocol that is, uh, that is used on the international communication is SCCP or Signal Connection Control Path. This uh, layer is responsible uh, for the routing of signal messages. It contains uh, uh, such information as source address, destination address, and some payload. Uh, that is TCAP protocol, the next protocol. TCAP, transaction capabilities uh, application part, is responsible for transactions and dialogues. This uh, protocol ties single requests and respons in responses into one transaction or one dialogue. And uh, the top layer protocol, MAP, mobile application part, uh, this protocol is a payload of uh, signal and message. It contains operation itself and all the parameters of each operation. Signal networks has have uh, their own unique security tools. They are signal transfer point. I have already mentioned this uh, node as a uh, router of signal traffic. Uh, but uh, also this uh, node is able to block some illegitimate traffic. SMS home routing. This uh, solution is intended to prevent SMS uh, fraud and SMS spam and uh, also hide IMC identifiers. And uh, one more security uh, tool is SSL and firewall. Uh, this is the uh, most sophisticated uh, <coughs> tool that uh, could protect uh, signal networks against uh, the most of signal attack such as IMC disclosure, location tracking, voice call interception, and so on. Some details about each of uh, signal uh, security tool. Signal transfer point. I have already mentioned twice. This is a uh, router of signal messages. Uh, this node is uh, usually installed on the border of the network and this network element uh, receives of all the external signal and traffic. So it is reasonable to bring in some security mechanisms into this network element. But uh, STP is able uh, to block uh, signal traffic only by some simple rules, for example, block particular operation code, block some uh, source of the traffic, and maybe in, in, in some cases combinations of uh, these uh, see simple rules. The next <coughs> protection tool is SMS home routing, but before I uh, explain how it works, uh, I would like uh, to describe how SMS delivery process works in mobile networks. We have a uh, SMS center that should deliver SMS to the subscriber. Normally, SMS center does not know where subscriber is located because all subscribers are mobile. Uh, and uh, this subscriber uh, could be anywhere around the world. SMS center, first of all, should request some routing information to deliver this message. It sends send routing info for SM signal message to the home network of subscriber. Uh, this uh, signal message comes uh, to, to the HLAR, to the database. HLAR 
always knows where subscriber is located. HLR replies with two data, they are IMC identity and address of uh, the current MSC. After that, SMS center knows address uh, where <coughs> to deliver the SMS and it does it. It delivers SMS to the appropriate MSC and MSC after that delivers uh, this SMS on uh, to the radio access system and uh, finally to the subscriber. When intruders uh, appear in the SS7 network, they are able to use this uh, dialog to retrieve uh, IMS identity and identity of the current MSC. This is the confidential information that uh, may, may be used uh, for other sophisticated attacks. To protect network, SMS router was introduced in the network as a, as a new network element. And now, <coughs> when the border STP receives send routine info for SM signal message, it should deliver this message not to the HLR but to the SMS router. SMS router generates some random IMC, fake IMC, and send this in the response. And also it uses uh, its own address instead of MSC's one. After that, SMS uh, comes to the SMS router. SMS router correlates uh, this fake IMC with MSSD number and uh, initiates one uh, new uh, SMS delivery process inside the network. It sends the same send routine for for SM message to the HLR internally in the home network. HLR replies with the correct data. After that, SMS is delivered to the right MSC and addressing uh, right subscriber. Uh, here we see two SMS delivery processes. First one is external, and the second one is fully internal. And what what we see that <coughs> no confidential information goes abroad, only fake data. Now, if intruder uh, appears in the SS7 network, this intruder can send uh, send routine info for SM signal message. This message is delivered to the SMS router, and SMS router replies with fake data. So the network is protected. And the third, uh, <coughs> the third security tool, SS7 firewall. SS7 firewall usually implemented not in line but in loop mode. It looks like this: when uh, SS7 message comes to the STP, STP routes it to the SS7 firewall. SS7 firewall has a lot of uh, rules, uh, smart rules. Uh, to define if uh, this uh, signal message is illegitimate or, no or not. If the message is I illegitimate or malformed, uh, not malformed, but uh, hostile, uh, SSN firewall just blocks it. Otherwise, it sends it back to the STP, and STP delivers the uh, message into the network, into the home network, and it delivers uh, to the destination node. All the SS7 firewalls relies on uh, GSMA rules. Uh, GSMA actually uh, has done the great, wo uh, great work. They classified all uh, potentially hazard signal messages into three categories. The first category contains list of operations that may be used only for internal signal exchange. If this traffic comes from external connections, these signal messages uh, or this uh, all signal traffic should be blocked. Category two consists a list of uh, signaling messages that uh, should be related to inbound roamers. For example, I am an inbound roamer here in China. I came from Russia. My Russian operator can send some signaling traffic to Chinese operator, and this signal traffic uh, should be related on my identity. 
if the same Russian operator send the same signal traffic to the tra Chinese operator that is related to Chinese subscribers, this traffic is illegitimate. And uh, category three, uh, the list of operations of uh, category three is also available on the interconnection. But uh, category three is uh, opposite to category two. Uh, <coughs> all the operations from category three are related to outbound subscribers. For example, um, I, I am outbound subscribers, uh, outbound subscriber from my ho home network point of view. And if uh, I perform some operations here, Chinese operator sends some signaling traffic to my home, to Russian operator, and uh, this uh, traffic should be related to my subscriber identity. If Chinese operator sends the same signaling traffic to the R Russian operator, uh, that is related uh, to other subscribers uh, who are home, this traffic is illegitimate. And uh, now I'll describe se several attacks, several uh, vulnerabilities. And uh, to make this story more interesting, <coughs> I'll imagine some intruder uh, who will uh, perform illegitimate activities step by step, uh, receiving some information from the network. And on each turn, on each step, uh, this intruder will use <coughs> different vulnerability, will exploit different vulnerabilities of the mobile network. First, what uh, intruder needs, this is IMSI identity. And uh, to receive this identifier, our intruder will use, uh, will exploit vulnerability of malformed application context name. To explain what the application context is, uh, I uh, need to explain uh, some details about TCAP protocol. TCAP protocol consists of uh, several fields. The first one is the TCAP message type. This is mandatory field. The second one is transaction identity, one or two. This is also mandatory field. The next uh, block, not field, but huge block, is a dialogue portion. This portion contains application context name. Application context name defines the operation that is uh, coded on the upper layer, on the map layer. And map layer itself is, uh, <coughs> uh, is laid inside the component portion. Uh, two latest uh, components, dialogue portion and component portion, are optional parameters in TCAP protocol. Let's look <coughs> uh, in some details of the application context name. This is a set of numbers. Each number ha uh, has its own definition. But in all the map operations, first six numbers are the constant. And let's see what happens if our intruder changes one of uh, these constant values to some value that is uh, not supported, that, that is out of range. For example, uh, intruder changes uh, zero, that means ETSI, the uh, as identified organization, uh, to number four, that is unknown value for the standard. So, intruder appears in the SS7 and sends send routine info for a SAM signaling message with malformed application context. This signal message comes to the STP and STP uh, starts inspecting the, this uh, message layer by layer. First, SCP layer. STP defines the destination node. Destination node is uh, HLR. The second, TCAP layer. And here, STP faces with uh, malformed application context. STP considers that uh, all the message is uh, 
also malformed. And what the decision? Of course, pass this message into the network. The destination node is known. This is HLR. STP does not look uh, inside, does not uh, inspect other protocols. Uh, that is MAP. And on the MAP protocol, uh, STP could uh, find operation code. Send root info for SM. That means message should be routed not to the HLR, but to the SMS router to implement SMS home routing procedure. STP sends this message to the HLR. It uh, considers uh, destination node should decide if uh, this message malformed or not. Uh, this uh, destination node should decide should it reply on this message with error or with normal uh, signal message. And what happens? HLR ignores malformed application context and replies with correct data, with correct IMC and correct MSC address. But uh, this is not all in this attack. Uh, normally, uh, intruder does not know if uh, this data is correct or not, because if uh, SMS home routing procedure is implemented, intruder receives uh, the same structure of data to be sure that uh, the SMS home routing is bypassed, intruder needs to send the same, absolutely the same signaling request and uh, compare IMC identity in the response. If uh, SMS home routing procedure uh, works, intruder receives two different uh, random IMC in uh, two responses. But uh, if intruder sees equal IMCs, that means SMS home, home routing uh, solution is bypassed. So, now our intruder receives uh, some technical, some confidential technical data about uh, target subscriber, but this is not valuable for our intruder, and they want uh, to find where this uh, subscriber is located. And now intruder will uh, perform one more attack, location tracking, and will exploit another vulnerability, that is substitution of operation code tag. But uh, before I explain attack mechanic, I need to describe some uh, technical information about signal networks. Uh, I have mentioned, m mentioned that MSSDN and global titles have uh, the same structure. Uh, <coughs> they consist of uh, a group of digits. The first group defines country. This is a country code. In this uh, case, this is China. The second group defines mobile or fixed operator. This is network destination code. I uh, took these digits uh, 854 uh, randomly, so I don't know if uh, there is uh, operator with uh, this code in China. And the third group of digits defines subscriber or a node if this is a glo global title. The next identity type is IMC. IMC is also consists uh, also consists of uh, three groups of dig of digits. The first group defines mobile country. This is mobile country code. The second group defines network or mobile network code and the third group of digits uh, defines particular subscriber pay your attention these codes might belong to the same operator and if we speak about uh, correlation of operator or comparison of operator we do not uh, compare digits of global title and imc digit by digit but first we need to define operator by global title prefix and operator by IMC prefix. After that, uh, to do the comparison. How it works in SSN firewalls? Uh, in this uh, example, uh, SSN firewall receives uh, some signal message. This is uh, provide uh, subscriber info. And uh, it inspects this uh, layer by layer. It defines operation. 
Now it's a Febri info belongs to the category two regarding uh, JSMA classification. That means that uh, a SN firewall needs to define source operator from this part, from the SCCP layer, and the target subscriber operator from the map layer. What we see? Source operator somewhere in Switzerland, this is the Swiss operator, and the subscriber is from China, from Chinese operator. These uh, two operators are not equal, so the decision is block this incoming message. Let's look uh, in s uh, some details more. Uh, this is a recomm ITU recommendation that describes uh, TCAP protocol. And here we see interesting thing. Uh, TCAP uh, operation code tag uh, might be local or global value. And they have uh, different values, two and six. Normally, in all the map messages, uh <coughs> is used local operation code for both local signal traffic and international signal traffic. On the traffic dump, it uh, looks like this. Uh, O2, this is the local operation tag. Then O1, this is the length of the code itself, of the operation code. And for six, this is hexadecimal uh, uh, code of this operation, of the provide subscriber info request. Let's see what happens if uh, our intruder uh, substitute uh, tag of the operation code. Intruder sends provide subscriber info signal message, but uh, uh, <coughs> they use they use O6 instead of O2 instead of normal value. Wireshark cannot uh, <coughs> cannot encode this message at all. And w what happens then? STP sends this message to the SSN firewall, but SSN firewall expects only local values, and it ignores all global all the global values. It sends this message to the STP, and STP delivers it to the uh, destination node that is MSC and VLR. And one more surprise, MSC and VLR replies with uh, normal message uh, and it codes operation with normal, with local operation, operation code tag. Here in this message we can see identity of uh, the cell that processes uh, target subscriber. So the <coughs> location tracking attack is done. A seven firewall bypassed. During this research, we sent this uh, kind of malicious traffic on uh, equipment of four different vendors. And all nodes replied with uh, normal requests, or n normal uh, responses, sorry, uh, that were coded in uh, local operation code tags. So, our intruder knows location of the target subscriber, but this enough, not all. Intruder wants to intercept voice call, or a lot of voice calls of uh, this subscriber. And now intruder will use, uh, will exploit one more vulnerability that, uh, that is uh, connected with double map or double component encoding. First of all, let's look how classical uh, voice call or man in the middle uh, attack works in mobile networks and signal networks uh, that are not protected. First of all, intruder sends insert subscriber data. Uh, this uh, signal message contains uh, IMC of target subscriber and some information about, uh, that is intended to change billing system of the subscriber in the profile, this one. This message is delivered to the MSC and VLR. 
this node sends OK, profile is updated. After that, uh, intruder just finalizes the transaction. And now, intruder should wait for the subscriber to call. When this uh, tar target subscriber who is read on the picture, when subscriber calls, information comes to the MSC, and MSC should uh, perform billion process. It sends initial DP signaling message to the billing platform, to the spoof, to the fake billing platform that is uh, under the hacker's control. After that, hacker is able to send connect message with uh, private branch exchange number. And this is direction to redirect, to forward call to this number, to, th to this new number. MSC just redirect this uh, call to the PBX. After that, hacker is able to initiate one more new call to the <coughs> uh, target operator and use this uh, number information because initial DP signal message contains information about A and B subscriber, about calling and call subscribers. Uh, in this case, uh, intruder just make a call to correct B subscriber and spoofs address of A subscriber. This call comes to the operator. Two subscribers are able to communicate each other, but all the voice traffic goes through the uh, hackers controlled equipment. SSA on firewalls, of course, uh, is able to block this attack. Uh, when insert subscriber data signal message from the hacker comes to the network, STP sends this uh, signal message to the SSN firewall, and SSN firewall uh, starts uh, inspecting this message. It finds that uh, the operation code is insert subscriber data. Uh, this operation code belongs to category two. That means uh, SSN firewall should compare source and target subscriber, or operators of uh, source and target subscriber. And uh, we know Switzerland is not China, so this message should be blocked. Attack is impossible. One uh, more interesting thing about TCAP protocol. When uh, I was speaking about this uh, protocol, I mentioned uh, a component portion, and I said this uh, component portion includes map operation itself. But uh, standard suggests, suggests that it uh, could be more than one component within one TCAP, uh, TCAP primitive. Each uh, component uh, should have its own operation and they might, might uh, have uh, different subscriber identities. When SSL firewalls faces uh, with uh, this kind of signal messages. This is uh, a really unexpected uh, message. Uh, <coughs> SN firewalls usually inspects only first part, for first component. And uh, it considers uh, that the second component, this is just a long tail of the first component. And it, uh, does not uh, look at this. Let's look how Intruder can use uh, this uh, feature of the signaling protocol. Intruder sends uh, signal message that contains two operations in two components. First one is insert, subscri uh, insert subscriber data and the second one is delete subscriber data. This message comes to the STP. STP routes this message to the SSN firewall. SSN firewall, how we know, inspects only first component. Uh, first component is without any identity. This is okay regarding the standard. So the SSN firewall sends the message to the STP back and STP delivers this message to the destination node. From the MSC's point of view, this combination simultaneously insert and delete uh, 
this is something wrong and unknown. This is impossible combination. That's why MSC sends some erroneous message, return error. It looks uh, normal from the first point, point of view, but uh, this signal message with error goes in pickup continue signal message. That means <coughs> that MSC says something like this. I don't understand you. Please repeat your request within the same transaction. And intruder, intruder does. Intruder sends one more signal message within this transaction. That uh, consists of two, again, of two component. Both of them are insert subscriber data operations. The first uh, component is without subscriber identity, and the second one contains identity of the target subscriber. SN firewall, again, uh, again uh, inspects only the first component. It uh, sees that the first component is absolutely normal and pass this message to the network. Now, MSC has two insert subscriber data requests within one TCAP, within one TCAP message. MSC sends OK for the first component and OK for the second one. So the uh, subscriber profiles profile is updated. After that, intruder finalizes the <coughs> transaction. And now they are waiting for the call. Subscriber, target subscriber calls. MSC sends initial DP signal message to the uh, intruder's equipment. Intruder replies with connect to the PBX. Call goes to the hacker's PBX. After that, hacker redirects one more. This call to the B subscriber. Subscribers are able to talk to each other, but all the traffic goes through the <coughs> hacker's PBX. So, and this attack is successful, and S7 firewall is bypassed. And uh, what I can uh, say as a conclusion, uh, really, S7 uh, st stack of S7 protocols has uh, some problems. First of them is uh, architecture, architectural flaws. Uh, the second one, uh, operators usually makes uh, may make a lot of mistakes in the configuration. Uh, first of all, in STP configuration, uh, some of uh, described attacks could be impossible if uh, STP configuration is correct. And uh, of course, uh, now we see a lot of software bugs of telecom equipment. Uh, for example, at the last, la last cases, last case, uh, we saw that uh, MSC sa said, uh, I don't understand, please continue, repeat your, your request. But uh, insert and, and simultaneous uh, delete should be rejected at all just uh, on, on the first uh, request. Uh, message uh, to mobile operators. Uh, please check your security tools as soon as new vulnerability is reported. Uh, you also should uh, use intrusion detection systems uh, together with uh, SS7 firewalls because some of attacks uh, could not be blocked on the SS7 firewalls, but IDS are able to detect them. Uh, block almost all double map uh, messages. Uh, during our research and during our monitoring of uh, uh, signaling, uh, we saw only one legal pair with uh, double map companies. This is begin subscriber activity and process unstructured SS data. And of course, configure uh, STP and the firewalls carefully. And don't, don't forget about uh, application context names, uh, malformed application context names, and operation uh, codes, locals, and global. Thank you for your attention. Please questions.
Thank you.